let's look at uh, the PVA homework from uh, AP Exam Review 2. So this is uh, 1973 number 8. A particle moves in a straight line with velocity um, v of t equals t squared. How far does the particle move between the times t equals 1 and t equals 2? So we're trying to find out how far, or in another word, um, how much distance is covered um, given our velocity function. So the relationship between velocity and the distance covered is that we know that distance traveled is the accumulation of velocity. And we can think of the accumulation of velocity as using the integral. So recall that the integral of v of t from 1 to 2, uh, we just essentially are um, going through um, the first theorem of calculus where we're evaluating. So the integral of velocity is simply going to be um, position function. And then the position at 2 minus the position at 1 would be how far, the, um, how much uh, the particle travels between um, those time periods. So this is essentially what we're trying to get to. So that's why we're trying to get to, we're taking the integral of velocity. So the integral of velocity, we have integral of t squared, which will pr um, produce t cubed over 3 once we go through power rule. Then we plug in the upper and lower bound. So plugging the upper bound first, we get 8 thirds. Minus, now plugging the lower bound, we get 1 third. So 8 thirds minus 1 third is 7 thirds. Okay, next one here. The position, uh, this is 1985, number 11. The position of a particle moving along a straight line at any given time uh, is given by a uh, position function s sub t. What's the acceleration of the particle when t equals 4? So this is a pretty straightforward problem because if we want to find the acceleration, uh, we can just go through derivative twice from position to velocity and then from velocity to acceleration. So we can go through power rule position t squared plus 4t plus 4. The derivative will be 2t plus 4. And then that will get us a velocity. When we find the derivative of velocity, 2t becomes 2, 4 goes to 0. So this is, so acceleration is constant. That means no matter what the time value is, acceleration will always be a constant 2, constant value of 2. So that means acceleration at 4 must also be 2, since there is no variable for us to plug into. Okay, the next one here, 1997, number 8 and 9. Um, okay, Bug begins to crawl up a vertical wire at time t equals 0. The velocity is given uh, by the graph shown. Uh, at what value of t does the bug change direction? So if we're looking at the velocity function, um, the direction change will occur if there is a sign change from either positive to negative or from negative to positive. And the only sign change that we see that crosses the x-intercept is at 6. Okay, anything above the x-axis represents uh, positive velocity. So we know that a bug is crawling upwards between 0 and 6. And after 6, between 6 and 8, the bug is crawling um, in a downward direction. So at 6, there's a change in direction. Okay, part number, uh, number 9. What's the total distance that the bug traveled from 0 to 8? So with distance, we look at the area of each of the regions between the graph and the x-axis, and we just total them up. Uh, the only thing we have to uh, be cautious of is that with distance, we have to convert any negative area to positive. So this is area of a triangle gives us 3, area of a rectangle is 6, area of a triangle is 3, and area of this triangle is 1. So then we add those together. 3 plus 6 plus 3 plus 1 gives us 13. Okay, 2003, number 25. A particle moves along the x-axis so that at time t is greater than or equal to 0, its position is given by x of t. At what time is the particle at rest? So we can find out when particle is at rest when we set our velocity equal to 0. So to get to velocity, we find the derivative, 6t squared minus 42t plus 72. Uh, set equal to 0, we factor out the 6, and we get 3 and 4. So t is equal to, um, at, so when t is equal to 3 and 4 seconds, our velocity is equal to 0.